Let's take a look at actual transactions entered into the system. First, we'll create a purchase requisition. Now, you'll notice the windows in Sage Intact are all very similar, whether we're starting with the purchase requisition purchase order or anywhere else in the purchasing transaction process. You can see the transaction type on the top of the screen. What I'm gonna do is I'll start typing in my vendor name, then select the vendor I wanna use. I can specify the job at the top and the header of the transaction, or I can break down the lines in my line item entries. Again, you'll see fields that are applicable to the header information of this requisition. There are optional sections to include more data on the purchase requisition, just as there are on the purchase order. For example, shipping dates may be important on some types of transactions. Scope may be on some others. In these fields, you can include paragraphs of information from which you can drag onto the actual requisition or purchase order to be sent out to the vendor, allowing you to add extra information as needed for those requisitions and purchase orders. Additional fields to track additional information are available as well, such as schedule, internal reference, external reference, and bonding information. Let's jump down to the line items for when it's time to code the transaction. Now, all the grids inside of Sage Intact can be configured so as to display the fields you want to show in the entry window and hide the ones you don't. More fields are available by clicking on this show details link. Now, I'll start typing in my job information and I'll select my cost code and cost type. And what it'll do is it'll default an item ID from the cost type menu. But of course, you can override the item ID if you say wanted to select from your item list or provide additional descriptions for this specific transaction here in the item description. The billable flag will default in from the job setup and moving to the right, we'll see different dimensions we may code this transaction to. In my demo environment, I've got this state and the branch, which I'm calling the location setup. From this standpoint, we'll enter in the quantity that we want to order. And if we know the price, we can do that as well. By simply tabbing to the next line, this allows me then to enter in the next line I want to record for this purchase requisition. Purchase requisitions, just like purchase orders, can have lines that are type quantity, in which case you'll be receiving 20 of these items, even if the price is different for each item, or they can have, um, say like a price line, in which case I'll be receiving against the dollar value. So if this line item I've entered $10,000 and we will receive purchase orders against this line or issue invoices against this line, this happens up until the point where we hit that $10,000 total. Then that line will be closed out. Now, when I'm happy with my purchase requisition, I can simply click on submit here to submit this purchase requisition to the approval uh, and it'll be approved by someone who's the approver. It will then go through my approval workflow and be ready to convert to a purchase order. I can also alternatively save it as a draft if I want to come back to it and add it in later. So let's take a look at that purchase requisition that was submitted. We're going to go to my purchase requisition window. You can see the list of purchase requisitions, which could be filtered. If I want to filter vendor, for example, I could type in the vendor's name. You can see that this top one here was submitted and was waiting for an approval. So if I click on that submitted button, I can see the approval history here. And you can see that the rule that it's following for approval and to whom it's waiting for approval from. Now, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to jump over to a browser where I am logged in as the approved user. We're going to call him Brandon for the sake of this demonstration. So I'm going to jump over to the approver dashboard, Brandon's dashboard. We're going to pretend I'm Brandon. Hello. This approver has this dashboard set up here and he can see which transactions are waiting for approval. So if Brandon, or in this case, me clicks on the magnifying glass, it's going to open up the windows of those transactions that are waiting for an approval. Now, 
From this standpoint, I can decide to approve or decline by looking at this view, or I can look at it in more detail. I could do this by clicking on view and look at the details of the transaction and then decide if I want to approve or decline. Now, both windows are going to give me an option uh, where I can enter comments that I might want to make on the transaction. Additionally, inside of Intact transactions, we have the ability to collaborate with our collaboration functions. This allows us to keep record of this transaction and allow us to record any comments we might want to add onto this transaction. We can also tag individual users, such as the user that entered this transaction. So if Brandon needed to ask a question of the person who submitted this transaction, you can do it right in Intact and it'll tag them, sending them an email. But in this case, we're going to imagine that everything looks right. Brandon's happy with how the transactions looks and he's going to approve it. Or in this case, I'll approve it. So we're going to approve the transaction. And once the transaction is approved, what I'm gonna do is I'll just refresh here. Okay. And now it's been approved. It is a purchase requisition that's ready to be converted to the next step in the workflow. So I can simply click on convert. And at this point, I could convert it into say like a standard purchase order for a job or a purchase order for stock. Those are two different branches in this workflow that we have set up. And I can make a decision on which branch I would like it to follow. For this case though, for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to convert this to a purchase order. Now, when I do so, as I get it going here, everything from the purchase requisition is gonna get copied to my purchase order. So there's no need for dual entry. Again, a big part of this setup and the way Siege and Tech does things with our purchasing transactions is we're trying to eliminate as much double entry and manual entry as possible. So you'll be able to see all the information and how that was entered into the purchase requisition. I can also click on this show spend insights button, and that's going to provide me with information on the budget. As an approver, I can also see the budget remaining for the cost codes that have been entered on this transaction. I can click on the spend insights button and it will pull up the two lines that I've coded transactions to the job, the cost code and the cost type. It will tell me what my budget was for each of those coding combinations, as well as how much is spent in actual or committed cost. And I can click on those dollar values to drill down to see those transactions if I desire. I can then use the drill down as well and go all the way back to that source of the transaction entry if I want to as well. So in this case, this committed cost was a purchase order. And you can see that here. I can see that purchase requisition has been converted to a purchase order. If I want to see that purchase order, I can click right from this link or I can go to my list of purchase orders. To make it quicker, I'll just click on convert it. I can see the workflow that this purchase requisition created this purchase order. Now, when I click on the purchase order, I will see that purchase order here. Again, for this purchase order, there's many actions I could take. I could edit this purchase order here. I can convert it to an invoice. I could potentially copy it to a new transaction, either in purchase order or purchase requisition. For the sake of this demonstration, for example, what I'll do is I'll convert this to an invoice. I can do that right from this list here. I could also pull up uh, this in my invoices windows and select this purchase order to convert it. So here now I've got the invoice open. I may want to add an attachment to this invoice. For example, if the vendor sent me a PDF of the invoice, I may want to attach that so that the people looking at the transaction later could see that PDF. Attaching a document or an invoice is as simple as just dragging a PDF over to the field, and then I'll have the PDF attached to the invoice. Again, I can view this transaction, submit it for an approval, check how it affects the budget or save it for later. But what I'll do here is I'll submit this transaction for an approval. And now back on my list of vendor invoices, I can see the invoice that was created and view the details of that invoice. I can see the status is that it was submitted for an approval. If I want to see more information on the transaction, I can click the transaction to see the transaction details. 
Clicking on the history tab allows me to see the workflow that this transaction has gone through, that it started with a purchase requisition purchase order. And now we are at the invoice level. Invoice status is submitted and it's waiting on an approval. And if I want to see who's going to approve that transaction, I can see that here in the description. Now that's a workflow of a transaction workflow from the beginning to the end based off of my current demo configuration and transaction definitions. You can see that workflow here of how that transaction flows from the system. And again, this is something that you can configure for your own organization. You're not stuck with just this one way of doing things. For more information on that, you can watch our video on the purchasing setup. Additionally, the purchasing setup talks through the different approval policies that you can put in place for moving transactions through the system. Here, my example was walking through the purchase order workflow, but the subcontract workflow as a side note, because we get a lot of questions about subcontracts and how that would work in Sage and Tech, it would work very much in the same way with a couple possible differentiations of requiring like some different fields throughout the process. And it just would depend on the specific needs of your business. And that's where we would want to talk to you one-to-one. -one. Again, if you have questions or if you'd like to dig deeper into this, or you'd want to learn more about Sage and Tech, you're always welcome to reach out. And thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.